Hello and welcome, this is Pepin from Pepin Reacts, and on today's episode, we're going to cover the Stanley Parable. Now, I've watched the Let's Plays of this game, let's say. I haven't actually played it myself, but I kind of know everything about the game. Uh, that's how obsessed I am. But Meter has not heard of the game, not played it, nothing. So, this is going to be his first foray, using big words here, into the Stanley Parable. I'm excited. Uh, so, let's start playing. Uh, this is just like normal controls for any kind of game. Wazed in a mouse? Yeah, wazed in a mouse. And E to kind of do actions. Don't this skip this. This is story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day, of every month, of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-winding, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in. Good for him. They had been made exactly for this job, and Stanley was happy. That's awesome. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. I'm scared. I don't want to step out of my office. Can I hack the computer? Maybe. Uh, run debug. D colon. Oh, that's not working. All right. Um, well, I'm just going to do what the thing tells me to do. Kind of. It's working clock. It is. I tried getting my girlfriend to play this. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. My girlfriend's not very good at playing video games. That was a bit of a problem. So what do you think is happening? Um, I don't know, it's a holiday. <laughs> Stanley just overstayed. What's written on the board in there? Sales in this quarter. Oh, they're going down. Maybe, yeah. maybe they're out of business. When Stanley came to a set of Whoa. two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay, my left is this side. All right, I'll go to the left left. <laughs> you have to think about that. All these same, that same picture. It's a very famous picture. It's called Spring in New York. Spring in New York. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll take your word for it. It's too bright. Yet, there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. <laughs> it's a very true statement right there. Okay, I won't stand here and watch them all. Oh? Requires more secondary research. All right, yeah. Somewhere in here. Profits, profits, profits. Mm -hmm. Different type of profits. Mm -hmm. 
graphs about things plus money. We have our new product. <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly what a fax looks like, too. Things, happy feelings, cross that out. And they fired somebody over it. Am I supposed to be taking the time to read all this crap? or If you want to, you can do... No, you play it however you want to play it. Okay. Whiteboard manager, huh? Wait, wait. There's an office party on Friday. Um, mergers. This box is too small. That's funny. <laughs> so maybe. Wait, wait. What was mine? What am I? 4-2? 4-4-2? 4 I should have written it down. Something like that. Maybe I'm dead. Like a ghost just exploring the office. Who moved my desk? Please keep targets on the topic of... And then it's blurred. Hmm. Interesting. Jim. Jim. <laughs> They're all numbers except Jim. Okay, that's enough of that. Oh, one more whiteboard. Shift global market para pa parad, parry. Is there another it's word? Probably paradigm. Paradigm. Oh, okay. Maybe. Monetize free to play. Monetize free to play. Okay, yeah. Broom closet. Let's get in this Stanley broom closet. Into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Give me stuff. Can I jump? There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow. Just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. But I like it, it in here. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some... Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. What if I don't walk upstairs? But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made uh. any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. What? He so felt fulfilled. He imagined himself flying <laughs> and began to gently float above the ground. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field. And it too appeared. It was so much fun. And Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me 
thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself? Believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? <laughs> Stanley <laughs> is as awake right now. As he's Achievement unlocked. You can't jump. Well, I keep <laughs> trying. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. That this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently. And he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin. The press of the mattress on his back. The fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please. Yeah. It's Let's all go I back want. To that. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Hmm. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, got her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this. And in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. I did it. I beat it. <laughs> I disobeyed the rules, and it killed me. <laughs> I think you killed yourself there. Four two seven. All of his co-workers were gone. What could oh, so I can't disobey, Stanley or I die? To go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. I faked you. <laughs> Thought I was gonna go right. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. So it's Wednesday. Wednesday. No, I don't know how I came to that conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> it's only logical. I didn't look at the table last time. See, this game makes me feel like nostalgic. Because there we go. 
because it's like the old valve engine. Oh no! Oh no! 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 Not again! I won't be part of this. I'm not going to encourage you. I'm not going to say anything at all. I'm just going to be patient and wait for you to finish whatever it is you enjoy doing so much in this. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. I'm here to see the boss. <laughs> hey, boss. Into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not now a I'm the boss. of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Where's my flashlight? F. F for flashlight. Or, actually, F is for friends who bring us together. U is for you and me. N is for anywhere, anytime, all down here in the deep blue sea. Love it. Topical. F is for fire that burns down the whole towns. U is for uranium. Bombs. N is for no survivors. Plankton. I used to have that song on my uh, Zune. Yeah, you did. Stanley realized he felt a bit. <laughs> you did indeed. Was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Rent a fence? <laughs> I don't want to escape. I want to go back to my normal job. I like that job. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? I really want to jump. <laughs> Fall? No. Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. So, they're watching me work. Whatever. <laughs> I kind of figured that'd be your answer. One, two, four? Oh, this God. mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? 
No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. No, oh, I want to turn it back online. Control my mind again, I was happy. Did you ever play Half-Life 2? Uh, no. Oh, man. Should've. Like, these sort of graphics used to be, like, the, uh, cream of the crop. Okay. Big red button. Ten. So many buttons. So many! Button, button, button. I press you all day. Do, do, do. Wait, wait. So I hit a four and a five. There's a three. Do I have to hit them in like order? Hmm. Four was all the way up there. Uh, Ooh. I bet you wish you could fly. Look, you did earlier. Worth a shot. <laughs> Hold on, let me hit all of them and see if any of them do anything. I feel like this game rewards exploration. Four. Hit number five. Can I jump yet? Nope. <gasps> Aha. Wait, what just happened? I can crouch. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh. <laughs> Don't hit the Windows key, got it. Hold on. It's the it's the right. Hmm. Oh, there we are. Oh hey, you're away. Nothing. Huh. Wait, what's this door? I feel like you're avoiding the uh, the most obvious door. I am. Well, look, there's lights here. <laughs> I, don't know. I think this is proving his point about you just being a button pusher. <laughs> Fine, Nate. Follow your lead. Oh, wait, do I have to hit this and then go back? Mm. System power. When at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. Oh, Stanley, you didn't just activate the controls, did you? After they kept you enslaved all these years, you go yeah, and try I liked to take it. control of the machine for yourself. Is that what you wanted? Control? Oh, Stanley, I applaud your effort, I really do. But you need to understand, there's only so much that machine can do. You were supposed to let it go. Turn the controls off. Never. If you I didn't even think about using the, the powers machine, for myself. You don't have to do much better <laughs> than that. I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you do. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, 
Stanley suddenly realized he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, nuclear detonators are set to explode, eliminating the entire complex. How long Sweet. until detonation then? Mm, let's say um, two minutes. Ah, now this is making things a little more fun, isn't it, Stanley? It's your time to shine. You are the star. It's your story now. Shape it to your heart's desires. Oh, this is much better than what I had in mind. What a shame we have so little time left to enjoy it. Mere moments until the bomb goes off. But what precious moments each one of them is. More time to talk about you, about me, where we're going, what all this means. I barely know where to start. What's that? You'd like to know where your co-workers are. A moment of solace before you're obliterated. All right, I'm in a good mood. You're gonna die anyway. I'll tell you exactly what happened to them. I erased them. I turned the off enter the passcode. Ah, oh, crap. I don't remember what the passcode of course, was. That was merely in this instance of the story. Sometimes when I tell it, I simply let you sit there in your office forever, pushing buttons endlessly and then dying alone. Other times, I let the office sink into the ground, swallowing everyone inside, or I let it burn to a crisp. I have to say this, though. This version of events has been rather amusing. Watching you try to make sense of everything and take back the control wrested away from you, it's quite rich. I almost hate to see it go. But I'm sure whatever I come up with on the next go around will be even better. My goodness, only 34 seconds left. But I'm enjoying this so much. You know what? To hell with it. I'm going to put some extra time on the clock. Why not? These are precious additional seconds, Stanley. Time doesn't grow on trees. Oh dear me, what's the matter, Stanley? Is it that you have no idea where you're going or what you're supposed to be doing right now? Or did you just assume when you saw that timer that something in this room was capable of turning it off? I mean, look at you. Running from button to button, screen to screen, clicking on every little thing in this room. These numbered buttons, no, these colored ones, or maybe this big red button, or this door. Everything, anything, something here will save me. Interesting. Why would you think that, Stanley? That this video game can be beaten? One sold? Do you have any idea what your purpose in this place is? <laughs> Stanley. You're in for quite a disappointment, but here's a spoiler for you. That timer isn't a catalyst to keep the action moving along. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. You're only still playing instead of watching a cutscene because I want to watch you for every moment that you're powerless. To see you made humble. This is not a challenge, it's a tragedy. You wanted to control this world, that's fine. But I'm going to destroy it first, so you okay. can't. Sounds good. Take a look at the clock, Stanley. That's 30 seconds you have left to struggle. 30 seconds until a hey. big boom and then nothing. No ending here. Just you being blown to pieces. Will you cling desperately to your frail life? Or will you let it go peacefully? Another choice. Make it count. Or don't. It's all the same to me. All apart. How are you talking about, dude? And believe me, I will be laughing at every second of your inevitable life from the moment we fade in until the moment I say, happily ever up. He killed me. <laughs> Existential crisis. <laughs> Can I do this yet? I really want to type on that computer. Oh, I see. I'm just gonna wait. Wait for what? And the door to open. Open. He 
He's like typing open sesame and stuff. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know what else to do. Can I jump yet? I wonder if the minute hand's moving on that clock. It's like, I always wondering about that kind of programming stuff, like, how accurate did it make the clock? Is it just the second hand, or is it everything? I don't know. Sometimes they go ham. Hello? Open. I think at this point, you might as well just uh, uh, restart. Really? Yeah. I broke it that bad? Uh, I think that's actually one of the endings. Is just it does that. You're just stuck in the room. Right. If you don't go, leave. It's soon enough. All right, I'll leave. Just a step through this door, Stanley thought to himself. That's all I need. If I can make it through this door, I can make it through them all. I think if you stay in there long enough, it will do something. Open door. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Did he, though? Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. If you're lying right now, stop. I can't jump. Need a key card, okay. You gotta believe, boy. Okay. But in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley left from the platform and plunged to his death. Good job, Stanley. Everyone <sighs> thinks you are very powerful. <gasps> nice. Good job, Stanley. Thanks. You are very powerful. I died. Whoa. Hi, Stanley. I uh, just wanted to leave you a message to let you know there's a few things I need you to pick up on your way home from work today. We need milk, cereal, dish soap, spaghetti, get a thing of sugar, some bread, and coffee beans, whichever ones you like. I'll give you a call if there's anything I forgot. Thanks, sweetie. See you tonight. Okay. So give me a pen and paper. I need to write that shit down. <laughs> <laughs> milk, cereal, sugar, bread. That's probably enough. I'll just get those things. Milk, sugar, when bread. Stanley came to a set of two open doors. He entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's <laughs> office, hoping he might find an answer there. My man. <laughs> this, is all, this is the only constant in my life. <laughs> Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Speedrun strats. Does that work? Uh -huh. I 
I've got the feeling money's for stealing, but not yours, of course. Boy, that's a lovely purse. Extreme bathrooms. I've seen some pretty nice bathrooms in my time. Yeah, this one? It's a pretty nice one. Yeah, it's actually not bad. Mirror Except the window, yeah. Work. Mirror's terrible. Um, <laughs> gun to a panda's head. <laughs> Business strategy. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Graphs. In Graphs. Indoors monthly. Wait, what if I want to go up? There we go. Let's continue going up. Oh, it's my name. It kind of looks like a penis shape uh, thing on there. Very phallic. Yeah, very phallic. Oh, 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 oh. It's like you can hear some small audio in the background. <laughs> Is that just you? <laughs> That's the game. Okay, I thought I thought maybe it was you. What do you say? Some like shit that was, was, yeah. It's a long elevator. I'm, I'm not sure if that's you. It's not me, none of it's me. Aw, oh, sugar. All right, I'll go to the boss office. What's this? Business time. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud to nobody. He began wildly tearing <laughs> through papers on the boss's desk, pulling books off the shelf, looking behind paintings, desperate for clues to his situation. But his attention was caught by a keypad behind the boss's desk. What could its purpose be? In fact, this keypad guarded the terrible secret that lay buried below his feet. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Sugar going down, down, netting round, and sugar you going, going down, down swinging. swinging. Be the only one with a bullet. <laughs> so bring your gun and cock, 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 and pull it. Yeah, that's it. They definitely say cock six times. <laughs> yeah. I mean, wouldn't you? Uh, yeah, for sure. Stanley I would. walked straight ahead through the large door that read "Mind Control Facility." Although this passageway had the word "Escape" written on it. The truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. <laughs> <laughs> like, nope. So far, he's not lied to me that I know of. But of course, Stanley thought better of it and realized he simply had too much to live for. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. <coughs> what horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Speedrun strats reduces lag. Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Freedom! Hey, 
Okay, there's some off down there. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was Never. unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? Maybe. Here awesome. was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he... chill of uncertainty was it over no I can hear myself walking yes he had won he had defeated the machine unshackled himself from someone else's command freedom was mere moments away and yet even as the immense door slowly opened Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do. Or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. And now the game starts. <laughs> the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Man, this new Skyrim looks great. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin. The feeling of liberation. The immense possibility of... Now I can't move. <laughs> <laughs> this was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. It's really ironic that he's talking about freedom and being able to do what you want. And <laughs> Takes all my power away. There, I beat the game. I did it. I just followed whatever he told me to do. <laughs> So we're getting a little bit hungry right now, so we're going to stop it right here. But Steve's definitely willing to play the game a bit more, mm -hmm. explore some more avenues. There's a lot of naughty things I haven't done yet. Uh, many naughty things. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to come back in part two and finish up the game, or as far as we can go. You know, explore more. So if you want to find us, we have a podcast. It's called We Need to Talk. Now, what's We Need to Talk? We Need to Talk is a podcast by two best friends. That's you and me. Oh, hey. Where we talk about anything and everything from uh, euthanasia to is a hot dog a sandwich. And yes, everything's a sandwich. In one spot. It's part of a game. He likes to see how long he can go without dying. So far, he's doing excellent. And Thank if he you. just stays right where he is, I'm sure he'll keep up that good momentum. Let's nice. observe the genius at work. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so if you want to find us, we're at facebook.com slash we need to talk show or twitter.com slash we need to, no, that's not right. WNTT1. WNTT1, or just go to any podcast player, Spotify, iTunes, you know, whatever you have on your, your phone and just search we need to talk. It's got our lovely faces on the cover. Yep. And really the easiest way, WNTTpodcast.com. You'll oh. find everything you need right there. Or if you even really want, you know, just to confuse you even more, we have go to podcastnh.com and you can find us on there as many, as well as many other shows that are quite excellent. Absolutely. All right. Until next time.
be ready because Stanley is coming. He's coming for you, your wives, your children. You have many wives, many children, all from different wives. So definitely hide them from Steve. I'm Stanley. And this was 